Okay, well, good afternoon and welcome everybody. My name is Lisa Reichert. I'm the Career and Professional Development Lead with People and Culture at UC Berkeley, as well as the co-chair of this year's NOW conference. I hope you've all been enjoying your conference experience and I'm delighted to serve as your moderator for this fantastic session this afternoon. And I have the pleasure of welcoming everybody to So You Want to Be a Project Manager. And this session is presented by Faith Snowden, Sam Griffin, Mira Roseman, Gert Reinhardt, and Wayne Kwong. Uh, just a few reminders that you can access the materials for today's session on the live conference platform within the description of this session, and that the session is being recorded and will be posted on our NOW conference website and our YouTube channel for broader viewing access after the conference has concluded. And in today's session, you will all be muted. So please add any questions you have to the chat. And you can also message me directly if you wish for a question to remain anonymous. There is live closed captioning available. So please click the CC box at the, button of the bottom of the screen to allow for subtitles. And with that, I'm happy to introduce you to our facilitator, Faye Snowden. And Faye has 21 years in higher education, serving in various information technology, leadership, and senior project management roles. Her career has been focused on the information technology field, and her broad experience includes computer operations, help desk design, implementation and leadership, infrastructure, network and telecom leadership, project and program management, business analysis, and teaching project management. She is currently the manager of the technology program office for Berkeley IT. And during her career, Faye has designed, implemented, and managed help desks in higher education and private industry. She's transformed failing teams, developed a portfolio management office, and led projects and programs to replace legacy IT, voice, network, infrastructure, and enterprise systems. Faye has a master's of English from the University of California Stanislaus and, and certifications in project management, Lean Six Sigma, business analysis, and ITIL foundations. All right. Uh, well, there's more. <laughs> so wow. Let me share just a little more, Faye. Faye, published, <laughs> Faye is a published author of poems, short stories, and mysteries, and she's received writing fellowships from the Virginia Center of the Creative Arts and Dijrasi. With her entire, while well, her entire career has been focused on information technology, Faye's mantra is that technology should enable the strategic mission of the institution it serves. And with that, Faye, welcome, and I turn it over to you. All right, thank you. First of all, I wanna just thank all of you for coming today and so happy to see all of you interested in project management, which is a growing field. And the Project Management Institute tells us that there's gonna be a gap all the way to 2027 of qualified project management professionals and jobs that, needed, that need to be filled. So right now you guys have the unique opportunity if you're interested in, in joining this field of preparing yourself um, and uh, you know, uh, becoming qualified and experienced and doing everything you can to actually get in the field. It, uh, you know, for the lack of a better phrase, it's really, really hot right now. It's like sizzling, sizzle, right? So today, what we hope to engage you in is a conversation. And I do want to thank my uh, project managers for being here. Um, I call them, um, <laughs> they are so knowledgeable and I'm so happy that they agreed to share your, their knowledge with you today. But the reason that I wanted to give this session to you is that I also teach project management at a university level. Um, and I always hear this question about um, how do I get there? What does a project manager do? And those come, those questions come from my students. But when I do research online, if you do a Google search right now, and, and don't challenge me on that and prove me wrong because you'll make me sad. But when you do research on that, you don't want to make face sad. But when you do research on that, what it comes up with is, oh, this is how you manage a project. Or what comes up is, oh, these are all the, you know, the five process groups that you have to be aware of. But there is less um, conversation about you know, what is being a project manager actually like and how do you get there? So this is what I was hoping that my team could do with, with you all today. 
and um, it's it's going to be a real casual conversation about um, being a project manager. I hope that you will put your questions in the chat to ask questions. And then I'm hoping that some of these folks, they have some really interesting stories about how they came to be in this field. Um, one thing about project management is that you're always coming from someplace else, right? <laughs> I mean, I didn't wake up in the morning, uh, you know, in, in, in my career and say, oh my goodness, you know, I want to be a, when I was a kid, I want to be Wonder Woman, but my backup job if I can't be Wonder Woman as a project manager. Yes, that's what I want. I, I didn't do that. I went through a really sort of uh, circuitous route and that's what we want to talk about today. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask questions of the panelists and I'll introduce you to them as I ask those questions. But if you have any questions as we're going through this, please put it in the chat and we're going to have, um, I think Lisa or someone else is, that they may interrupt us and I'm going to encourage them to interrupt us because I want this to be an interactive conversation um, to get that question answered. So uh, before we get started with the folks with the real information, um, I am going to ask you to put in the chat why you're here today and what you hope to get out of this session. Yeah. And then um, while you're doing that, I will say that uh, Lisa mentioned something about my mantra and I'm very passionate about that. Um, what we do as project managers, I used to tell the project managers that used to work for me uh, at my other institution, that I'm gonna get you all a t-shirt and that t-shirt is gonna say alignment. And alignment is um, you are doing work that's gonna further the strategic goal and vision and the mission of your organization. So that's that, you know, if you could, if you, if you don't think of, can't get anything else out of this session, if you walk away with that, then you're doing, you're doing good, right? So, okay, so let's look at this. Uh, Caroline Forrest, hi there. Oh, great. Um, Lily, curious about project management. Mariah already manages projects and what interested in what more formal training looks like. Great, thank you guys. So the first question um, I wanted to uh, ask of our wonderful Wayne. Wayne, are you ready to be first? You ready? Totally. Okay. Um, yeah. So let me tell you about a little bit about Wayne. If you guys go to our website, um, we have something on there called Two Truths and a Lie, where we tell two truths about ourselves, but one there's a, a lie up there. So you guys can go out and, and do that later on our website. But um, I just want to tell you a little bit about Wayne's biography. He joined UC Berkeley as a technical project manager in 2018, but he has over 20 years of successful experience in IT project management, working in multiple industries including higher ed, and this one's important, right? Healthcare, higher ed's important too, but healthcare, I just, people, healthcare project managers just, I just, I'm so in awe of them, and also telecommunications. Wayne has conducted infrastructure deployment, system implementation, operational analysis, and financial budget planning and forecasting. So before coming to the TPO, the Technology Program Office in November of 2020, um, he was a project manager in UC Berkeley's research, teaching, and learning, and he was also an operations consultant specialist and senior public project managers as healthcare at Kaiser Permanente for 15 years. So some of his current projects, Wayne, I don't know if the bio on the website is, um, is uh, updated, but I think it's safe to say that you work on a lot of classroom technology projects, um, making sure that our classrooms are aptly prepared for uh, teaching and learning and hybrid uh, teaching and learning with our, with our students and faculty. So the first question I have of you is can you tell us talk a little bit about your journey how you became a project um, manager i mean how did you land here sure um well first good afternoon everybody um it's the pleasure of meeting all of you and today uh, myself and my colleagues will share some of our experience and this will be a very fun and interactive session <laughs> um my entire career is always in it so there, there's no strange in terms of there's a natural progression for me um, I started as a business analyst and eventually become a consultant specialist and a senior PM in my previous life in, in the health industry working for Kaiser before joining UC Berkeley. One of the PM in one of the project, the PM quit. Um, there are quite a bit of stresses being a PM. So from time to time you see PM sometimes look for other projects. So when the PM quit, I was requested 
by the team to be the interim PM while they search for a new PM. So the entire search in the private industry took a, a lot longer than UC Berkeley. Uh, it took over four or five months. And by the end of that, I also applied for the position. I was hired as a PM. That, that's how I got started as a project manager. Any question? It's no. a very boring story. Yeah, no, no, great. Thank you so much. You. So the next, um, the next person uh, that I want to go to is Mara. Oh, uh, Jenny asks, "What's the trajectory of growth for a PM?" And we're going to get into that. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to get into that, Jenny, Jenny, as much as we can. Um, so the next person I want to ask a question is Mara. Mara, so let me tell you a little bit about Mara. Um, if I can get to the right team bios, okay. We all love Mira, so here we go. Um, Mira is joining the technology program office in 2021 as a senior project manager. And she also has a lot of experience over two, 20 years of project management, also in healthcare and she and also in retail industries. She has worked with established organizations as well as startups managing both local and global teams and is passionate about the end user experience and believe that technology should make life easier for end users. Um, she used to work at Pete's Coffee and Tea prior to uh, joining Berkeley um, and then running projects that supported employees in the home office and retail stores. And then prior to Pete, she worked for an electronic, electronic medical records company, managed development of that company's first ever web offering. I've got a few projects like that myself. I've been in IT for a long time. And she holds a bachelor's degree in English literature. Yay for the liberal arts and from UC Santa Barbara and has been a credentialed project management professional for project management since 2009. So Mira, how did you land here? Uh, so th thank you, Faye. Thanks for the, yeah. and thanks everybody for being here. This is great. Um, so I, like Wayne, was have always been in some kind of technology field. When I, when I got out of school, I thought that I would, uh, I would go to law school and I'd be a lawyer and, but then I had been in school for a while and I decided that I just, I wasn't ready to do that. So I wanted to go to work. Uh, so I went to work for uh, Sybase, which some of you may or may not know. And I, so I've been in technology since I graduated from, from college. Um, after Sybase, I went to work for a startup and then ended up at a health at the healthcare company. And uh, I was kind of helping out being an admin to differ. Actually, I was a technical writer. And my VP said one day, he said, you know, you like bossing people around and keeping track of stuff. Do you want to be a project manager? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, huh, well, that's an interesting way to kind of spin that. But I, there, but I did. So I, so I started, uh, started doing project management there. I had like eight teams that I ran projects for. It was very satisfying. It was very fulfilling. You know, you got to, I got to know a ton of people. I learned a lot of stuff. And then it's just kind of, you know, taken off from there. I stayed, you know, I stayed at that company for almost 10 years. And I went to Pete's for almost 11 years. And again, the thing is, uh, it's, you know, it's just, you have the opportunity to make a real impact in people's lives with some of your projects. And that I love. I just, you know, I like to like to know that, you know, I help somebody do something easier or help something get done better, you know? So that was, so that's why I kind of stuck with it. So, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, another 10 years here at Berkeley. Yeah. It's really interesting that you said they, the first place that you like bossing people around. So why don't you be a project manager? So we're going to talk about later when we're doing, you know, the intentional route to being a project manager, what kind of skills that you need. And believe me, you can't just boss people around. <laughs> and it's not quite as straightforward as that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not as far. You're just like looking at them. I remember when I first wanted to be a, um, one of my supervisors were leaving and was, was leaving and, and they asked me, well, well, Faye, could you, do you want, do, would you be interested in taking over the supervisor position? I'm like, sure. What, what do I have to do? Sign time cards? <laughs> and that's, that's what it reminds me. That was a long time ago. I was very young, so don't judge. But um, next, we're going to talk to Gert. Uh, Gert, are you ready for this? I am. Um... Okay. Let me, let me introduce you. So uh, Gert joined UC Berkeley and the TPO, the Technology Program Office, in the spring of 2020. And for 20 years, um, he was based in Massachusetts, <laughs> where he worked both in, in both software startups and consulting companies, primarily as a project program and change manager. So his area of expertise includes managing software development and implementing projects, as well as leading change management and organizational design initiative. He has cross industry experience, most recently in financial service, biomedical research and pharmaceuticals. Um, you're an alumnus of the University of Antwerp, 
in Belgium with a master's in economics. And Gerd is a, uh, also a Scrum Alliance certified Scrum master and a project management institute agile certified practitioner. So before I um, ask her to tell a story, I just want to say that you know the project management field. You have your different methodologies, and you you need to make sure that if you have a team, that you have uh, capabilities with different methodologies on your team. So what Gert brings to this team, and and uh, he knows waterfall uh, project management methodology, but he is a real expert in agile. Um, the uh, agile uh, techniques and methods. So welcome, Gert. So Gert, can you tell us how you came to be a project manager? Yes, uh, thank you, Faye, and welcome, everyone. Um, so I am going to buck the trend because um, I've been in project management for, for about as long as, as Mira and Wayne, um, and I have never worked in, in IT before. So um, I came from it the, the opposite side. My first job out of college, I was working in a marketing department of a manufacturing company. And in my third year at that company, um, this manufacturing company was going to start the implementation of an enterprise resource uh, planning software. Um, and it was also going to affect the marketing department. And my boss was not interested at all in being a subject matter expert. So he asked me if I wanted to do it. And I said, sure, why not? And I thought it was the most fascinating thing I had seen was to, was to see those consultants come in and you know, project managers and business analysts and, and try to understand how you work and then kind of fit the technology to you know, your processes. Um, and, and, and so long story short, when I left that, that first company um, a year later, I went to a software company that did just in, in worked in professional services, which is, you know, one of the many ways that people get into project management through, you know, professional services as a project manager for a software company. So I did that for a while. That's also what got me to the US. Um, I was employee number two of a software startup. Um, and then I was also employee number six of a um, local consulting office in Boston. So I've done a little bit of both the software consulting and then just the kind of blank slate consulting, right? Where you go in and it could be, you know, vendor selection, it could be a system implementation, you know, what have you. So that's, uh, that's how I got started. Yeah, and that blank slate consultant requires a lot of business analysis skills, right? Because you're trying to help somebody solve a problem. Um, and so you have to go problem cause first and then determine, you know, what solutions are going to fix whatever issues that they're having. Yeah, those are hard too, because most people come in with, they think they already know how to solve their problem. So those are difficult. We'll talk about some of the challenges yeah. later, but thank you, Gert. So um, last but definitely not least, um, is, uh, I'm going to introduce Sam Griffin. Sam, are you there and ready? I am. All right, let's see this. So Sam has over, um, I'm so glad she's on our team. She has over eight years of technical project management in university. Here's that healthcare again, you guys. If you're interested in project management, think about healthcare. Um, so Sam has eight years technical project management in university healthcare and software development setting. She has spent the last few years at the University of Pacific where she was responsible for leading university-wide projects, including the implementation of Office 365. And I was there when that was going on and that was not an easy project. And the project to prevent dead naming, which required changes to most universities' systems. And a digital workspace um, implementation for faculty and students, she did that as well. Um, she has an associate degree in system administration Administration and a bachelor's uh, degree in network communications management from DeVry. And she is also a certified project management professional. Um, she is bringing to the TPO her centralized PM, um, PMO experience because she used to work in a centralized project management office at Pacific. And we are uh, building ours. Our team is coming together, um, as well as the perspective she's gained from working on a wide variety of university projects. So Sam, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely did not expect to be a project manager um, coming out of high school. So when I got out of high school, I was I felt like I was kind of done with school. I needed a break. Um, so I decided to go to beauty school to become an esthetician. Did that, loved it. Um, but my mindset at the time was, OK, I got my esthetician license. I'm going to do that on the side while I go back to school now and, and really figure out what I wanted to do. 
um, could not figure out what I wanted to do. So I decided to go to school for phlebotomy and get certified as a phlebotomist. Did that, came out of that, um, really couldn't land a job that I had in mind. The only job that I got offered at the time, this was years ago, um, was for the men's jail in Tracy. So that really wasn't um, the route I wanted to take. So I did get a job as an esthetician, did that for a while, but at the same time decided to go back to school. So I thought about what I really grew up around and my dad and my brother were always around computers. They worked in IT. So that's when I decided to go to DeVry um, for my associates in systems administration. Um, did that and then went for my bachelor's in networks communication management. And so the whole time I thought, okay, I guess I'm going to set up networks. I'm going to do this. And then I finally had one teacher and it was a project management course. Didn't really know much about it. I just knew, okay, I have to get through this so I can get, get my degree. And that teacher just changed everything for me. Um, really showed me, you know, what it took to manage a project to get things done within an IT environment. And I knew for me, project management was sold at that point. Um, so I got my degree and then coming out of that, it did take a little bit of time for me to get my foot in the door, not even as a project manager. I got my foot in the door um, first as an IT intern and then as technical support at a software company. And then as soon as I got my foot in the door at the software company, that's when I was really able to show my project management skills um, and then really just grow within a smaller company. So being able to support software projects really helped open the door and, and really just helped me gain skills to then um, realize I wanted to become certified. And then that's when I went for my PMP. And now I'm here. So. All right, great, thank you, welcome. And Sam's story is like kind of similar um, to mine in a way. I mean, I had been in IT since 1980 something, but um, I, uh, I was asked to take over this team and they were kind of flailing and in trouble. And, and when I looked at it, it was just like, it wasn't that there was anything wrong with the team and we had our, our challenges, but the thing was we had a lot of technical debt. We just had a lot of work effort um, that we we're trying to implement these outcomes. And I'm like, oh man, these are just a bunch of projects. And so I started um, uh, doing that work with the project management methodologies and practices and you know, applying that. And then they said, oh my goodness, um, something happened, something happened. And then they said, okay, we need a project management office. And they asked me to help um, kind of help set that up. So that's how I ended up where I am today. But thank you all for doing that. Um, uh, so I, I, I want to... Um, I want to, I think Sam, being a phlebotomist, right, that's probably the strangest part of anybody's journey, but does anybody else want to talk about what was the strangest part of your journey to getting to be a project manager? What do you think is what the strangest part? And don't be afraid to ask each other questions as we talk as well. And if nobody had a strange part, we can lose that and <laughs> move on to the next question. I'll say maybe the strangest part for me was that um, in, in that experience in my first job, I did not want to do my job anymore. I wanted to do the job of the folks that I was, you know, interacting with. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was just, uh, I just, um, like Sam said, right? You have a teacher and they light that spark or you just see someone, you know, kind of doing something and you're like, I want to do that, right? That That's, that's something that I want to do. So that, that was kind of the, the strangest thing for me. I did not want to do my job anymore. I wanted to do their job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that, Gert. Um, just to chime in, uh, just like Gert, uh, I thought being a PM was so easy, particularly when the PM left uh, on my old project. I was like, oh, how hard is it going to be? You just hold meetings and you just come up with a project plan and you just tell people what to do. I can do a better job than you. <laughs> or at least in my mind, I thought that was how easy it's going to be. Oh boy, it's totally different because there's a lot of tasks, there's a lot of follow-up behind the scene. There's a lot of deliverable and processes going on behind the curtain. Um, so it turns out that, wow, being a PM is nowhere near as easy as I originally thought. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't sign up for this, but yet I'm already being a PM. I was like, okay, so let me learn the ropes and let's move forward. Yeah, I think... Yeah, that, yeah, like I didn't sign up for this. I love it. Um, or who put my name down for this? That's another one. <laughs> um, thank you, Wayne. Anybody else want to talk about um, any strange parts of their journey or anything significant? 
I, I can't compete with Sam's Sam's phlebotomy. Oh, I family. know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so you've got to tell that story. I'm an institution. That, story. I, that, that one also I cannot compete with. <laughs> yeah. But you're talking about pivot, right? And our careers, yeah. you know, um, you know, and what us, you know, I'm from a different generation, but you know, we were told that we should work like 20, 30 years at a job and then get the gold watch in the end. And what my generation tended to do was even though we didn't like a job or we realized it wasn't right with the, for us, guys, remember the cartoon where the guy, the duck or the rooster would go out every day and go out to work and then come back, but you just feel like you're running on a treadmill. And we tended to do that a little bit longer um, than we should have. And what I really like about Sam's is that she knew, okay, this is not working, pivot. Okay, this is not working, pivot. You know, I, and I think that's that's awesome. So the next question I have for you guys is an, another question. Could you just describe your typical day? Anybody that wants to take that? So uh, I can certainly, so at UC Berkeley, project management is a little different than it was at Pete's. So like at Pete's, the first thing I would do is pick up my phone and see what happened overnight. There's less of that at UC Berkeley, I think, but it also is very, project driven, like sometimes I'm not as busy and sometimes I'm super, super busy generally um, around the a project, you know, when it's launching or something's really happening. But I'd say my typical day is I, like I check my email and then I kind of, I usually keep a task list for what I see from the, from yesterday and the day before what I want to do today. Check my email, go through my task list. If generally there's people I need to reach out to, check in on tasks for projects. Um, there's always, you know, the, the teams that I work with are very small, um, and but they all, everyone also has another job. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of kind of reminding, keeping track, making sure, you know, you're supposed to be doing this now. And, you know, is, do you have a problem? Um, you know, and I, I, you know, it's sort of a, it's sort of a mix of checking in, are you doing what you're supposed, what you're supposed to be doing? And checking in, do you need help getting something done? That's the, so I, so I think as a PM, I mean, a lot, a lot of our job is facilitate and finessing, you know, situations to get things done. Uh, then there's generally some, you know, some form of paperwork, which is like updating project plans or schedules or, you know, documentation, sending those out. Um, there's my, I am not back to back to back to back with meetings, which is nice because that means I can actually get work done. Now, my husband and I have disagreed for years about whether meetings are work time or not. I don't think they are. He thinks they are, but <laughs> all the PMs know what I'm talking about. Um, and then, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it is, it is different doing it remote. Uh, usually, you know, when I was at Pete's, you just get up and you walk around, you talk to people, you manage, you know, check out what's going on. This is very, you know, in this hybrid or is a remote environment, it's very much more Slack and Zoom and, hey, do you get a minute to talk and stuff to kind of keep things, to, you know, get this, keep things moving along. So, um, and then, you know, before I usually know it, it's the end of the day and it's time to sign off. So, but that's that's a pretty typical day. Great, thank you. And Lisa, I thought, um, and I think I had a question from Katie. We have some questions in the Q&A that you wanna ask. Yeah, thanks, Faye. Um, there were a few people asking about certification a few minutes ago and like, is it really needed? Is one of the questions related to certification. Also, um, is the extension um, project management course at UC Extension, does that lead to PMP certification? Um, might you and the panel be able to, to share about the importance of that and if if Extension is an option? Yes, and we'll definitely get into that. Um, uh, that I, I'll cover that in the presentation at the end, but just kind of getting into it now. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'll, I'm gonna ask you guys because I'm gonna give you my opinion um, based on data, but... <laughs> I would give you my opinion, you know, um, and, and when we're doing the presentation, but what do you guys think about certification? So anybody, uh, uh, gosh, let me see. Um, I'll, I'll, go no, ahead. So, I mean, I think the reality of it is, uh, is there are some jobs you just can't apply for. I mean, and those are going to be, they're going to say PMP required, and you're going to try to, you can try to get by, but you're probably not going to. Uh, and I, you know, and I'm not sure why they, uh, you know, companies choose that. I mean, obviously it's, it's, it's sort of like that idea of like, you, well, we assume you know how to do everything the right way. So then you can bring that foundation of information to us. Um, but like Berkeley, I had to have a PMP to, to get this job. Um, other places, you know, I think more government jobs, you have to have a PMP, private industry, it seems less, less required. And kind of to Faye's point with the way the job market is right now, I think people are probably, employers are probably going to be more flexible than they have in the past just because they need people. 
So they want people who have demonstrated skills, but not, not necessarily having gone through the whole PMP certification process, which is, uh, it's onerous, but also worth it because you really do under, you really get a good education on how, you know, what the best practices are. And, and even though I don't do all those things, that, you know, there's, there's a bunch of them that we all do do just because they make sense for a project. So yeah, I was explaining to somebody yesterday, one of my uh, students that I still keep in contact with is that what, what a PMP certification and the university extension course, and I will go into a little bit more in that when we're doing the presentation about the practical steps that you take to this, um, to this destination, um, is that you, it gives you a set of tools, right? So you have a toolbox, but when you are uh, taking a tool, uh, when you're um, using your toolbox to do a project, you're not necessarily using every single tool in that toolbox. You know, you may need a drill or you may need a screwdriver, but if, so you don't, you don't use all that knowledge or maybe you don't do some of those steps, but it is important that you have the knowledge that those tools are there. And that's what a PMP certifies to your employer that they have a set of tools that they can bring to the work to do that work. But I'm gonna, I want somebody else to chime in on here. Wayne, could you chime in on how you feel about um, um, PMP certifications versus organizational certifications versus UC extension certifications? Sure. Um, so in general, PMP certification is a foundation, uh, as, as Faye pointed out, definitely gives you a set of tools to use, let you get familiarized with the different processes and methodologies. But at the same time, uh, in my previous life with, with Kaiser, um, that was 15, 15 years ago, that was, a, a, so let, let's, let's, let's uh, go back, um, rewind over back 15 years ago in Kaiser, there was specific uh, Kaiser policy stating that they do not accept PMP certification. And here's the main reason why. There were a lot of case studies that some PMs with PMP certification working for Kaiser at that time was somehow was not managing the project as efficiently as the uh, health industry expected. So Kaiser implement a different policy now, any PM in Kaiser must get certified by Kaiser PM Academy. So there's a different set of uh, protocols. There's a different set of methodology and different classes that you need to go through and get certified before you become a Kaiser PM, which took me quite a few months to get there. And having said that, um, it gives you two different set of tools. So experience counts, certification, and knowing the methodology of the process also count as well. You need both. Uh, having just one of them may not be sufficient. So fast forward 13 years later, Kaiser all of a sudden realized, wait a minute, PMP is the industry standard. We will accept PMP certification going forward. But at the same time, as, as Mayra pointed out, you also need the PM experience plus the PMP certification. So you always need both. And then, um, thank you, Wayne. And then, Gert, you're also um, uh, kind of had a recent experience with this. I mean, you just got your PMI AC, I think it's the ACP certification for Agile, right. but you're also going through, you're also doing the UC extension courses in Agile. Can you talk a little bit about why you made that decision and what you feel about certifications? Yeah, because, uh, so the reason I, um, I kind of took that path with Agile is because um, I had rolled into the more traditional project management uh, methodologies, you know, by, by coincidence and much more uh, learning through, um, through doing than actually by certification. Um, and, and sometimes it just holds you back because to go back to the, um, the toolbox analogy, it's not just that you show up with your toolbox, it's that um, if, if you take a certification, a good certification, you expand your toolbox. Right now you show up with a bigger toolbox with more tools in them. Um, and so when, um, you know, when you see new, uh, methodologies kind of appearing, like, you know, agile is, you know, much more recent, you know, lean project management, you know, all of, all of those methodologies, um, I was quick to say, okay, let me, let me get a solid theoretical basis so that I can be more productive faster 
in you know in applying those methodologies right rather than just learning through doing it's learning through doing but you also have that background in terms of okay there's a couple of models that we can use there's a couple of things that work in this type of environment versus in in a different type of environment so that's why um you know that's why the the pmi um, agile certified practitioner certification. And that's why now I'm doing kind of, you know, the, the in-depth extension school agile certification as well, which, um, I mean, it's no joke, right? It's, it's basically, um, it's, um, five courses, three, uh, foundational courses through two electives. Um, each course is about, you know, four to six hours of, of, of instruction. Um, you you know there's attendance is being taken you get homework that homework gets graded and and you get um and you ha you have to do an exam right so um so it's it's a really good foundational basis for uh you know if you want to get into agile and i would say if if a pmp certification is daunting and you are at berkeley take advantage of that berkeley extension school um project management certification as well right it's maybe not as extensive as a pmp but it will get you on your way at at you know a, a lower threshold I, I i would think than than the pmp yeah and then i'm going to talk a little bit about that when we, we go into the presentation in the next six minutes here but um and to my knowledge, um, the extension course that you take at UC Extension does not lead to a PMP, but leads to a university certification and project management, um, as well as GERT. That's what you'll have at the end of the Agile course, right? It's a university right. certification. Um, it certifies that you pass the course, you have the knowledge, you're ready to go, but it's not a PMP. Uh, a P it doesn't lead to the PMP certification. That the certifying body for the PMP is a project management institute. Does anybody else want to jump in? Sam, do you have anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, even though I knew going into the project management field is what I wanted, I really didn't have that much knowledge about the certification. Um, so when I got hired at the software company, and you know, I saw that a project manager was needed. Um, when I got into that role, I was like, okay, yeah, I can manage projects. I took that one class. I have, you know, what I thought was the foundation. Um, and so I, on my own, started researching to become certified, just to kind of say I was certified. I didn't really understand at the time what what it came with. Um, so when I started researching, it was just so daunting to me. I didn't know where to start. Um, and then I said, you know what? It's fine. I'm just going to take the test. I'll be fine. But then work got really busy and thank goodness I didn't just take the test um, because then, so work got so busy, ended up going into a healthcare position as a project manager. But in order for me to stay in that role, um, part of the agreement was I needed to end up being certified in, in my PMP. So I worked with my manager at the time and I said, okay, I'll just buy the book, I'll do this. And she actually um, directed me to a boot camp. And so the boot camp I took really explained to me what it entailed, what was going to be on the test. And I think the biggest challenge for me was I had to forget, because I was working as a project manager already, I had to forget everything I did on my daily job routine and strictly go by the book. Um, so I'm so glad I did not take that test when I thought I could do it, um, just because I needed that knowledge of, okay, forget everything we do every day and go by the book. And then that's like what the, the team was talking about. We have our toolbox, we have the foundation of it, and we now know when and when not to use certain things. So I think just really doing the research and, and having that foundation of, okay, this is the route of the certification, what I need to take and what it's gonna entail. Right, okay. thank you. Um, Lisa, do we have any more? We have time for maybe, thank you, Sam. Um, thank you um, for, for saying that, and I was going to say that in the presentation too, which is now coming up in th four minutes. That usually, um, for example, I, I have two. I I hire. Um, I do not require. I don't believe a PMP. I think I require. I'm trying to remember equivalent position, uh, equivalent experience. But there is something in there that says within a year you must get your PMP. So that's going to depend on the hiring management manager as to whether or not they're going to require. Uh, a PMP at Berkeley, um, but uh, that's, I, and then just so you guys know, I have two um, 
senior project management three-year contract positions that I've just been approved for that I'll be hiring. So just so you'll know that. Great, so, thanks, Faye. We do, we have one related question about okay, that. So okay. um, when applying for a job within UC, would the PMP certification be viewed as equal to the UC Berkeley PM certification? I don't know. That's an excellent question. and One that I haven't thought about. I would have to give that some thought. Um, I, you know, I would think that it would, would have to, as Gert was saying, that um, if I had a, I don't know, I mean, and here you go, you get all wrapped up and with policy, you know, what the policy says, because our policy um, for our office right now says that if you're a senior PM, you need a certification, but you need a PMP, but maybe we'll look at that and, and try to figure out is that the right way to go? So that's a great question. I, I don't know. Great. We had um, another question, a little different, and this question is, how do you as project managers step into an organization's culture and successfully identify the best strategy to move through the politics and processes unique to that place and with those people? So who wants to take that? I can, I can start. Okay. Um, I would say, how, how do you step into a culture? I would say carefully and with, and with a lot of humility because um, because industries have different cultures and individual companies within industries have different cultures. And what I've noticed is that even, you know, at UC Berkeley, different departments have different cultures. So if you have a, a, a student facing organization, their sensitivities and their, um, you know, their area of focus is going to be different than if you work with a very technology driven, you know, department within, within IT, within kind of, you know, our own, environment that we are a part of um and it's i think it's a it, it's it's not something that you can it's not something that you can learn through getting certified it's something that you learn through you know like i said kind of um um humility and and just kind of you know walking in and 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 knowing that you're going to be learning a lot before you can actually you know contribute in terms of in terms of you know a culture right so that is um, um i've noticed that a lot I've, I've done international projects as well where you know something that works in the u.s does not work in france i mean that's that's actually a really good example it does not work in france right you have to have a very different approach um, and the same thing for, you know, a lot of Asian countries where, you know, the customs are just different and, and, and PMs are regarded in, in a different way in different cultures. Um, so you have to be aware of it and you have to adapt to, to a larger extent. You have to adapt to the culture that you're that you're working in because you're ultimately trying to make those folks successful, right? You're not trying to change their culture or do, or right. do it your way. Um, but yeah, you learn that through 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 doing that. There's no certification for that. Right. There's there's no certification, and uh, and but it, but the 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 when you're the information that they're going to give you, they're going to give you a couple of tools to kind of figure that out, right? Um, so they're going to say what are the environmental factors that are affecting your organization, and that's why it's really important to know what your organization's strategic goals are, what they care about, and stuff. That's going to help you understand what the cultural culture is. But there are certain things to do. We were talking about it in our, one of our meetings the other day about um, what were you saying? There's one called PESEL, right? Where you're, it's a framework where you look at an environment to try to figure out the gotchas, right? The political environment, the environmental environment, the uh, sociological environment, or is that socioeconomic? I forget. But they they give you like different, um, they give you like different tools and frameworks that you can kind of, um, um, kind of get you further along, but Gert is absolutely right. It takes a lot of, you got to know what questions to ask and you have to have humility along with using those tools about the environment. So with that, I mean, our time is going really fast and I want to spend some time talking about um, how you can take a more intentional route to being a project manager. So I will like, does anybody have any burning question that they want to ask before I do that? Or is everybody good to, for me to share my screen to start going over that? I think the last question that Jenny Sue put in is okay. actually a good question. Um, so it's this, it's a, so what she asked is that how much of your job is purely managing the projects, task people versus doing that, but also doing the work yourself. 
So what I would say here is that it, it, it is a slippery slope to be on a project and start to be a resource on the project that is not just the project manager. Because you get it, it gets very, very, it's very messy, especially if you are have deliverables for the project and you are not doing them because you're project managing or project managing other projects. Um, and another downside of it is that, and this and I had this experience and it was very strange, but I was the project manager. I had a project sponsor. We were doing this project, but everyone thought it was my idea that I that we were doing this project. And I was like, it is not my, this is not my plan. I mean, it's not my strategy at all. But people really will, they really will put a lot of, of weight into what you say and what you do. So it's uh, important to be kind of, I think, as you know, neutral and propelling this, this project forward while not getting wrapped up in doing too many of the tasks yourself, because right. then you just, be, you just become another, you know, you just become part of the problem if the project is a problem. So right. that would be, that's, that's what I'd have to say to that question. And then sometimes you do have to pull yourself back as far as the, I mean, you have a, an interest in the outcomes and the work. You want to make sure your project's successful, but sometimes the reasons why they're doing it or the political stuff, sometimes you, you want to stay back for that and be as, as objective as possible. So that was a, that was a good question. Yeah, great question, Jenny. So let me uh, take a, also take another step on, on answering this question as well. Just like Mayra pointed out, um, we want to be careful because as a PM, sometimes um, some department or some organization, particularly when they are not aware of what a PM's role is, they say, oh, you're the PM. Then you end up doing all the work or, or any work that I don't want to do. You're the PM. It's all yours. So we want to avoid that. Kind, uh, we, we need to avoid that, that area of concern. At the same time, our role as a PM is project manage the project itself, ensuring the project moving forward. Um, Depending on your particular technical knowledge, you may have some knowledge about some coding software or, or whatever area you're getting into, but be very careful because our yeah. job as PM is moving the project forward, not being a SME doing the project work itself. All right, yes. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this and Katie, we'll get back to your question. Um, we'll write that down and then we'll even um, reach out to you if we don't get to it here. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, oh, can you guys see, uh, so you wanna be a project manager? You can, okay. But I'm gonna escape for a minute. I'm going to escape because I wanna do a slideshow where I can see my speaker's notes. Hang on just a sec. Interview. There we are. Okay, so this is just gonna kind of quickly give you some intentional steps that you can take to be a project manager. So just really quickly, I'm gonna, I, I, you need to understand like what is a project in the project manager role and some of the needed skills, and then we'll get into how to prepare and, and do so, some uh, talk a little bit about certifications. And if there's time, we'll get into some questions. So uh, the def definition of a project, so you guys will know, a project has to have a unique outcome, meaning you're doing something different. Your environment is gonna change. Um, you're gonna create something new, you're gonna make something better, or you're gonna stop doing something. You're gonna de decommission an existing service. It's temporary, I mean, there's a definite beginning date that you start this effort and an end date. And you usually have some C-level executive who's championing the project. They're usually subject matter experts, experts and resources to actually do the work of the project. And um, uh, just so you know, you may plan um, the things that you know about up front, and as the project goes on, then you're going to do more planning as you learn new information, mm. detailed planning. So let's take going to the moon. So the first time you go to the moon, it's a unique outcome. All of a sudden you're on the moon, that's a project. If you wanna set up a tourist business to go to a moon, right? So um, you need to set up all the business process in order to set up that tourist business and your change is gonna be this beautiful business process that you set up, that's a project. But your, op your repetitive trip to the moon, that's operational work and that's not a project. So, What's the project management role? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got call and response in my background, so I always ask my students, I said, who's responsible for the success of a project? And, or who, and it's like, who's ultimately responsible? Responsible, not accountable. And I always say, 
the project manager and only the project manager. So the project manager is successful for the outcome of the project. They lead the team, they organize and coordinate the project. Um, and they don't necessarily, they're like a symphony conductor. And when they don't, they don't necessarily know how to play all the instruments, but they know when the drums need to come in. They know when the, is that a oboe? Or when the, okay, the, the, the bass. They know when the, the uh, cello needs to come in, right? They know when somebody needs to claim the cymbals, but they're not the person like Mira and Wayne said doing the work. They may know what comes up next. I mean, they may know how to do it, but they don't. They don't do it, and they make sure that you're you, you're making sure that your project is aligned to the the business and further into the strategic um, the strategic mission of the the business that you're in. So, what skills do a project manager need? The first skill is to, to the ways of working, right? And think of the ways of working or all the methodologies, the processes and the tools and all those things that you actually apply to your project management work. And then there are power skills, right? That's why I said that just because you can boss people around does not make you a project manager because most of the time in most organizations, the project, the people on the project team, they don't report to the project manager. So this person must have the leadership skills to influence and motivate their teams to do the work of their project. And the other thing is they must be an effective communicator um, so they can tell the story about the change they're making in the organization. And um, really, really important, they must have business acumen, right? They need to know what your organization's missions and goals are, what, what do they think about the future and how that organization is gonna look in the future, and then how the, that the work that they're doing is gonna affect the business side. So um, remember alignment, I'm gonna get everybody t-shirts that says alignment on it. So those are the skills that they need, right? So how do you prepare? So the first thing you do, and somebody in the chat mentioned, all you guys, all of you guys have worked on projects. You've done a wedding, you planned a family reunion, maybe you're a project manager, you're doing that work. You do that work kind of intuitively, right? So the first thing you should do is kind of sit down and, and inventory your skills. Um, and the UC Berkeley has what they call, I think it's maybe at the UC level, I'm not sure, but this transferable skills library, go there. There's a project management section. Remember Tracy Ullman? I'm old, so I don't know if you guys remember. Go there, right? And then catalog all of your skills. And then the things that you may need to like brush up on or the strengths that you can play to, start looking at those and, and, and doing that. So ask, ask these kind of questions of yourself. Can I motivate people to do the work when I'm not their boss? Can I resolve conflicts effectively, even though I'm emotionally involved in the conflict? Am I comfortable telling people, especially C-level executives, things they don't want to hear? Do I know how to summarize large amounts of information without, like, can I can I do a project summary about a complicated project? My, my sister always says, um, who's an auditor for UPS, one page with a lots of white space and still get the gist of the project across. Do I know how my organization works? what they care about, the politics, how they get things done. And um, do I know how my workers align with these goals? Um, the second thing you wanna do is, because you've already done some of this work, think about the work you've already done about projects. Remember projects, anything that you're getting a unique outcome and write that stuff down, start tracking that. Because if you do go for your project management certification, you have a list of everything that you worked on and it'll make the application process that much easier. Um, find uh, like Sam did, go to, you know, in your job, you may not be a project manager, but there may be um, opportunities where you can work on things um, as a project manager, or you can also um, uh, treat them like a project, you know, and, and use some of the tools that are out there on the web. Um, build your network, uh, think about adjacent roles, and I believe Sam did this as well. Maybe you can go in as a project coordinator or a business analyst, um, and then also get, get credentialed, but do not let that hold you back from applying for jobs, right? We, what's that song? Is there, is there the, we always don't get what we want, right? But we'll get what you need. So think about, when you're thinking about applying for that job, think about that, uh, 
I believe that's the Rolling Stones, right? Because they they may not have the the job market is so hot right now. They may have to take somebody without a PMP credential. So this is the big question, right? What's the difference between a PM certification and these organizational and university certificates, right? Uh, a PMP certification is internationally recognized. It is the gold standard right now. And one of the reasons that they are the gold standard is that the applications, practices, methodologies that they use are not stagnant. They survey um, thousands upon thousands of project managers every year to find out how they do their work. And then they change those standards to match the most effective ways to get the work done. Sometimes they're a little behind. They're a little behind on agile and um, those methodologies, but they are catching up. So when someone um, sees that you have a PMP certification, they know you already have two years of project experience because you need at least two years of project experience to apply for and have the certification. And they know that you're, you're recognized for a set of, um, that you know you know about all those tools that are out there. Um, so it adds credibility, it validates your experience. It is a requirement for most jobs. Um, they have done studies that if you have a PMP certification along with your other um, and sometimes along with your other technical expertise or expertise for your industry, your salary can be 25% higher, is not, will be, is 25% higher than those that do not have a PMP certification. The other thing about the PMP certification is that it's continuous learning, that you have to keep that, you have to, um, you have what they call professional development units where you have to learn um, new things every year and certify that you've done so. So as things are changing, you change the way you do projects. I'll give you an example. When I first started in this field, it was all about delivering the project on time and on budget. What was the third one? On time, on budget, and, and it meets the requirements, right? Well, that focus has shifted. It's about that, but it's also about benefits realization are the projects that you're doing actually benefiting your organization? You now, if I had, and I'll get over here for the organization and university certificate, if I had taken, a, a, I have a UC certificate or an organization certificate uh, 10 years ago, where will I, how am I refreshing my knowledge? So the PMP requires you to refresh your knowledges. Um, and it, like I said, response to changes in PM best practices. But it also can be difficult to get because that test is, I think that bad boy is what, uh, 250 questions, something like that, and four and a half hours long. It could be expensive, you know, two, three thousand dollars. Also stressful because you're taking a huge, big walk-in test, right? And time consuming because you're doing a lot of studying, right? And it's all, all that, all that studying and test taking is crunched up into a little small basket of time. Now let's talk about the organization or university certificate. Ain't nothing wrong with these certificates. <laughs> it is okay. It's okay, I promise. They usually don't expire, right? It covers some of the same materials, right? Um, less time constraints. You can have all that work spread over a semester so you can go to the beach on the weekends. You don't have to stress over it, right? It may be easier as the material is spread out as well. Um, if it's an organizational tip certificate, like Wayne said, it's usually tailored to your organizational practices, so you're not going to be getting in trouble. Um, um, you're not going to be uh, getting in trouble because you did something in a PMI way the organization doesn't like, right? Um, the issues are this. There's no emphasis on continuous learning after you get the certificate. It's great course, great coursework and everything. I, I highly recommend if somebody is interested in increasing knowledge on PM, they go look at the university certificate, but there's no emphasis on continuous learning. It doesn't validate experience. When you apply for the PMP, you have to tell them, I've been working on these projects for the last seven years and here's how I worked on them. You don't get that with a, um, with a UC certificate. Um, and then they may be tailored to organizational practice that are not recognized. Um, uh, any, oh, I'm sorry, I was kind of going over what, yeah. And, and jobs may still require a PMP certification, especially if your UC certificate was from 10, 15, 20 years ago. 
So I'm going to stop. I think I'm going to stop. Oh, um, so the requirements for the PMP certification, you need to have a four year degree or 36 months leading projects or a high school or a high school diploma and 60 months leading projects. And then you must have had like uh, Sam was saying a boot camp, like 35 hours of PM education or training. You must complete the application, pay the exam fee and schedule the exam. And that's it, those are the questions. So, um, that's that's it. So All right. we, we do have many questions okay. that have come in. Okay. So let's see, just um, leaving off where you what based on what you just shared, Faye, um, Keith asked, so you need two years of project management experience to get a PMP certification needed to get a project management job to get the two years experience. You're muted, Faye. Yeah, no, I, that's a that's a really kind of catch twenty two, right? Um, you need to you need to um, the PMP certification is a I don't know if you like a validation certificate. There is a validation that they are saying that you've worked on projects in the past, right? So um, you don't have to have a title of being a project manager, but you have to have some. Um, job experiences out there, um, those hours I talked about earlier, and I think they add up to two years, that you've worked on um, projects, right? So think about, if you look at it two years, two years of working on some type of project, regardless of your job title. I'm, um, I'm talking to this one student right now who's in um, manufacturing, and he's going for his PMP and the way he's doing it is that, okay, in this job, I did this project over there. I also did this project there. And six months ago, I did this project. So he's in the process right now of cataloging those experiences. And I know we, we're at 250 or is it 305? We are at 250 and um, we end at three o'clock. Oh, we, we end at three o'clock. Okay. Yes, we do. So I, we do have some time for other people to chime in on the panel for, on that question if they like. Um, but that's it, yeah. It doesn't have to be in a PM job. You don't have to be a project manager. You just have to have done projects. Yeah, One if thing I can add to that, Faye. Oh, okay. sorry, go ahead, Gert. No, no, go ahead, Sam. Um, so I was gonna say, that's actually one of the things that I had trouble with when I was doing research on my own because I didn't have necessarily the project management title, but I did a lot of like, let's say projects that had to do with like my job in technical support. So I kind of had the mindset of, okay, anything that I did that had an end date that I had to deliver, let's say to my boss, I would catalog that as a project that I did. Um, and then when you start thinking of it in that sense, it just adds up so quickly. Yeah. We have another um, related question. Some organizations require PMP, Others Agile, Scrum, Kanban, Six Sigma, et cetera. How do I know which one I should target? So I, I can maybe chime in on, on that. Um, I think it depends on the industry. It's a, it's a, it's a very valid question, right? Because, um, because you see all those different certifications and you, and you just and you just don't know which one is going to help me get my next job. So you kind of have to flip it around and say, well, what do I want my next job to be? So the, the, like the really straightforward examples, for example, like Kanban or, or Lean, if you want to do anything in supply chain or anything in manufacturing, you may want to look into Kanban and Lean because that's, that's kind of that's kind of where those methodologies came from. And that's where they are, you know, predominantly applied, not exclusively, but predominantly. If, if you're thinking, well, I'm in higher ed now, and I would love to stay in higher ed, then I would say anything PMP and to a certain extent agile, even though agile, agile is behind in terms of adoption in, in higher ed, but that's an opportunity as well, because you can come in and say, well, there's pockets of agile and I want to expand that. And that's, that's something that I think is a, is a worthwhile skill in higher ed. So if you're, if you want to stay in higher ed, maybe Kanban and Lean would not be the first thing to look at, but if you, 
you know, if you want to go to manufacturing, then it's the other way around. So it's kind of, it's almost, you know, you almost have to do your homework in terms of like, where would I, what would I like my next job to be? And then decide, okay, what is the certification that's going to be the most, you know, helpful? And if I may ask, answer Jenny's question about the, the trajectory at uh, UC Berkeley after your project manager, um, that really depends on the person. We are all working on our career paths at Berkeley. And I think that in your, um, and then, but if after your project manager, there are so many other places you can go, whether it be supervisory positions, especially if you um, have a lot of domain knowledge, and let's say if you've um, done a lot of applications development, um, projects and you have a lot of domain knowledge. I mean, you could be the leader of that group if you want supervisors. You can go be a, a, a technical person somewhere if you're technical. So it just depends on what you want to do. But I think UC Berkeley has some very good resources on how to work with that career path with your the, yourself and also with your, um, with your supervisor. Okay, another question that came up was the conductor metaphor and moon project example are helpful to see. It'd also be helpful to my understanding of this definition of a project to hear about actual projects that our panelists have project management here, or project managed here at Berkeley, if there's time. Yeah, we we're supposed to ask that question when you're out of time. So go ahead, guys, and just, uh, you know, what type of projects have you managed here? I can take, I, I have, so I have like, I have like five projects. They're all really different. One of them is a survey. Just, we want to get a, get, it's just a big information gathering project. One of them is the box, you know, cost containment, which is like try to get people to move their stuff out of box. Um, the other, the other projects are implementation of security policies. So again, it's a, a survey and then there's going to be a return that says, now you have to do this thing. Um, so the, those are the ones I've worked on at, at Berkeley. Um, other places I've worked on are, you know, implementation of large software systems. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty typical one if you're a PM in a company. So, and I mean, like GERD is doing some of that now and for sure. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good point, uh, Merit. So, uh, yeah, so you're right. There's, uh, if, if a, if a major system that's being used is getting, is being retired or it's, or it's obsolete and it has a huge impact on the functioning of the campus then as you're replacing it, you can't just, you know, switch one off and then say one system off and then say, oh, let's now, you know, let's now start building this other system. And in the meantime, you know, we're just not gonna, you know, we're just not gonna provide the service that that, that previous system, um, you know, was supporting. So you have to kind of be able to, 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 um, to, to transition from one to the, to, to the next system while, you um, you know, um, in making that seamless for the for the end users or as seamless as possible. Um, and so the system implementation one is definitely something that you're going to that you're going to run into. Um, um, I've also worked on an org design project. Um, so, you know, I, we used to Berkeley IT used to be called IS, ISNT, Information Services and Technology, and now we're Berkeley IT. And that's not just a name change, right? That's also an org change. So, so that's something that's got almost nothing to do with technology. That's basically what do we want our organization to look like so that it's better suited to be, you know, more responsive, more flexible, you know, more, you know, fill in the blank in the next 10 years, because you don't do an org chart, an, an, an org change every year, or every two years, every three years, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of disruption that you're causing. It's a lot of anxiety that you cause for folks where they're like, well, this is what I'm doing now. Am I still going to have a job? Is my job still going to look the same? So those are like, those are those one offs, right, where it's basically you know, your your organization is going to change completely. Well, you're going to probably need a, a project manager to keep track of, of, of all of those stakeholders and to, and to have an inventory of all of those anxieties and risks and make sure that all of them get addressed in the appropriate way. Great. And then, I think we have time for two more questions. There's so many coming in. Um, what are some of the classifications and job titles to look for for PM positions? Mm. Usually they'll say project manager um, or senior project manager or also project coordinator. Um, 
there is a role that's called an expediter. I've never seen one um, like listed in the uh, for a job. Um, do you guys got some? Do you guys have some some less obvious job titles that may be a lot of with a project? Have you seen a project analyst out there, you guys? No, oh, I've seen. Um... When I got hired in healthcare, I got hired as a project manager associate. And then once I was able to obtain my PNP, um, I was an intermediate project manager, which is between associate and senior. That's what I've seen. Between associate and senior? Okay. Something that I've noticed at UC Berkeley that's, that's very not obvious is um, I've worked with a couple of executive assistants who who, who could be project coordinators, right? They're not quite project managers, but an executive assistant at, at Berkeley, first of all, they typically work for more than one executive, which is unusual because in industry, it's like, you know, executive assistant works for one executive, right? Here we have executive assistants who work for two or three or four uh, managers or executives who uh, keep track of, of calendars and agendas who sometimes are asked to sit in at meetings because the person who gets invited to that meeting just can't make it. That is that is a project coordinator right there. I, I, I would think that if that person is like, you know what, I like the keeping track of schedules and, and being proactive about them and thinking through how things need to be scheduled, that is the type of person who I, I would say get some kind of certification, right? And, and maybe PMP is the one, but, but maybe at least something to get started because you are well on your way to becoming a project manager if that's what you love to do. Yeah, and there's also a, a junior certification they can get if they want to start small. If, and I don't think that requires, and, that, and, I, and I'm so sorry, Keith, I didn't, um, I forgot about this, but there, you don't have to go straight for the PMP. You can go for a PMP. I think it's a CAP or something like that, a certified associate. And it's called the CAP M. The yeah. Camp, yeah, yeah, and and that and, and I don't think I think it's like six months, or I don't think even any experience for that to actually take the test and take the exam. But yeah. Okay, let's let's wrap up with one final question. What PM method do you use most at Berkeley? I'm not gonna say. I'm gonna I'm gonna go off to my mute. Oh, can I can I say because I love your answer? Yeah, no, because I may and I may have to plug my ears. <laughs> Uh, water scrum falls. <laughs> I agree. It's, uh, it's there's no project is one size fits all. So some projects waterfall, some projects hybrid, some projects agile. And Berkeley has so many talented folks with a lot of intelligence in the team. We are so lucky to work with all of you. But at the same time, as a PM, we need to be flexible. Um, because the PIMBA or the PMP certification never dictates is one methodology. So we need to be flexible at the same time. Talk to your team, from your team, then you figure out this is where we're going to go. What is the best method to get there? So yeah. it's a combo of all of the buff. Well, thank you so much, Faye, Gert, Mira, Sam, Wayne, for your most informative strategies and sharing your own personal career journeys to project management. It's a very excellent presentation. Thanks for taking time to answer so many questions. Everybody, please remember to complete the session evaluation. I put it in the chat. And next up is our afternoon activity break Simply Samba with Ezra Bristow at 3.05 p.m. And you can get moving and grooving by clicking on the link under the activity break description on the live conference website. And then you'll want to be ready for our afternoon keynote, Thrive Big by Starting Small Now, which will be a conversation by UC Berkeley Chief People and Culture Officer Eugene Whitlock and Dr. Christine Carter from Better Up. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Thank you, Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. Luke. Bye, guys. Thank you.